Hello, mobile coin. People, happy renaissance. Happy renaissance. We recognize that it's after lunch. Your <laughs> blood level is probably going down. Your stomach's telling you to sleep. We're here to bring the energy and talk a little bit about the fact that mobile coin is one of the very few cryptocurrencies that actually has values. It's very important statement. It's a value-driven community, and that's part of what we want to bring the foundation to bear against, is making sure we talk about important things. And I would say you've already heard some about the values today. First and foremost, that it, that it is open source, so you can check the code for yourself, make sure there are no back doors. Mm -hmm. But then also thinking about is the value that you have the choice about when and where you share your data. As Renee was talking a little bit earlier, she's also on the foundation's board as well. Data exhaust, whether it's an old, outdated term or not, it's something that you should have the power as to when and where you want to share it. If you want to monetize it, you can, or keep it in your own control. Much also thinking about art and music. Yeah. So, I was going to say, much, yeah. of our, much of our intent and efforts with the MobileCoin Foundation, on top of speaking about things like privacy and security and the need for independent user control of their data, is in fact that we want to be supporting the, this conversation through a non-traditional manner, and that's through the arts. And we've seen this come to play today. We've seen m amazing artists. We've seen amazing musicians. We've, I haven't seen any dance yet. Was there I any dance? I hear Josh said maybe later. OK, maybe <laughs> later. I, I've heard rumors about the 9 o'clock timeline. Anyway, um, <laughs> there will be lots of fun. And, and what we really are working to bring to bear against this is a community, a sense of this groundswell need for security and privacy, and a way that we can move forward in conjunction with your former employers. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and I think that's also recognizing that we operate in a world in which increasingly the need to think about climate change and how we can play a role. And we want to celebrate, again, we opened up with the idea that MobileCoin is a value-led community, one of the few. And it was actually the community itself that decided that you wanted to be not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative. Yeah. And think about that again. That's actually an interesting force that can also play a role. So it's not just about thinking about this in terms of everything that can be done on the financial side, but that really that three-legged stool that thinks about, again, trust and having choice about when and where you share your data, contributing to the community in terms of art and music, and ultimately also thinking about how you can play a role in addressing the challenges of climate change and being not just carbon neutral, but ultimately carbon negative. So, so Sarah, I'm going to ask you, because you okay. are the chair of the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's 2022. It's, we're, we're all back here a year later. OK. What would you have liked to have seen sort of over the arc of the next year? Ooh. I would love to see mobile coin adopted in more end-to-end -end encrypted uh, messaging services. I would like to see mobile coin have this presence as a, a leader with that value system, with that um, integrity that we keep seeing everyone talk about in, in this particular corner of technology, that you've, you've all gotten a bit of flack in crypto recently, maybe for the last 10 years. Um, but we need to get to a spot where we have the hard conversations and not just the, this is super shiny and I can make a pile of gold by mining something fancy. Um, and of course, we, we have the, the great benefit of this being, to, to your point, the carbon negative in that it is not either proof of stake or proof of work. So, so, then the so next what's bit, yours? What's mine? Yeah. Uh, we've had hard conversations about what's the role of cryptocurrencies in stopping ransomware. Yeah. Uh, you may not be familiar that, uh, so three years ago, average damages in terms of ransomware were about $5 billion. Mm -hmm. A year later, it had doubled to being about $11 billion. Last year was 20 billion, and of course you've read the headlines about this year, so it's anybody's guess, but it could be 40 billion or more in terms of damages. And you, have you tried to get business insurance recently? The rider paperwork behind it? <laughs> Holy cow, we're gonna have to fix this. Not to mention that probably if anyone, like if they all tried to cash out at the same time for a rider's insurance, it'll just be, sorry, out of luck. Yeah. So I do think that's where we as a community need to talk about what is our responsibility with dealing. Again, we want in the encryption, but we also want to make sure that it's not aiding and abiding either human trafficking, mm -hmm. um, those that might be using it for ill-gotten gains. And so I think that's mm -hmm. going to be something that is we would like to hear from you all as to what your thoughts are to being part of the solution 
as a distinguisher, again, because as far as I know, I don't know of too many other crypto communities that are having these conversations. I don't know. Of, I don't know of many in crypto for sure. I know of some in open source, which mm -hmm. is very open important. Source, yes. Yeah, we have this this tension, of course, between the the entire economy that has built this area up um, most recently. I mean, it was built on many other e economies of scale before this, but with the tech economy here, we have moved to a space where there's a lot of um, following behind in any sort of super shiny buzzword thing. And so we're, we're really undermining ourselves at this point um, in this industry in, in various spots. So we want to have those hard conversations publicly, make sure that open source is brought to bear in this to make sure that we have that security and we have the auditability. We also will hope that there will be contributors out there. Maybe documentation, maybe tech writing, maybe actual crypto. You'd of course have to earn your way there and talk to Sarah about that, Sarah Drakely. I want the Sarah to ask about that. <laughs> um, but I can totally help you if you want to work on communities and if you want to help build the groundswell with us for Mobile Coin Foundation. So in addition to ransomware, I guess the other conversation we need to have is there may be one or two major large tech companies not represented at the moment Hypothetically here. Hypothetically speaking, Hypothetically, there are Hypothetically, that are behaving a mm -hmm. bit like a more like an autocratic regime when it yeah. comes to people's data. Uh, I've, but somehow I've we let that. them off the hook because they're a US company. So I don't know. I just feel like that's also a conversation we need to have too. Yeah, yeah. We should probably talk about that. I used to work for one of them. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about the one that changed the name, like somehow oh, that fixed everything. Oh, yeah, but no, yes. but the other one too. Yeah. OK, so we know we've got at least some big companies that we have to pay attention to too. And just generally looking at how our policy is also evolving yes. because we can't do this without making sure we do it legally, intentionally, and in a way that will benefit the industry and society. Like this, otherwise we're just in the line, in the queue, doing crypto for the speculation. And that's not that exciting to me anyway. Right. Maybe it is to some. 100%, I mean, it really is, I mean, the reason why I think when I was saying to Josh, believe it or not, before COVID, was really yeah. that it's a movement, yeah. and it's a movement that really is about empowering individual choice, individual freedom, but at the same time being socially and civically responsible. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at everything that's happened over the last four or five years where it seems like we have more irresponsible social on so many levels, we have mm -hmm. fraying of civic ties. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking to all of you as ideally signing up to be part of the Calvary. Mm -hmm. And to help close the rifts we have, because we have societal rifts of huge magnitude oh, today. No, 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 there's no No, you, you hadn't noticed them? Uh, there was something about disinformation. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe we should talk to Renee later. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, I mean, we know about these rifts. We know about the fact that information asymmetry, and in fact, even with this, this 10x or 10,000x um, acceleration of the in information around you, we know that people have trouble figuring out what is right, what is good, and this is great to have a nice, clean moral compass and vision for this group. So there's some practical bits. Um, so Mobile Coin Foundation uh, does exist as a legal entity, and we are building programs to go ahead and help promote these conversations about um, privacy and security and the need for technology to be evaluated as socially good, potentially, or at least know how the attack vectors work so that we can mitigate as much as possible the fact that every tech is a tool and a weapon, and it's who get, whose hands are used against what dominant structure that makes it either a tool or a weapon. 100%. It's how you choose how to use it. So if you have ideas as to topics we should be addressing, go to the Foundation's website. You should be able to send us your thoughts. Yep. You can also engage our just recently active social media account. We Woo. are looking to hire a chief of staff full time. If there's someone who is very interested in, in this driven mission, we will be looking for someone. So, um, so yeah, so uh, I also want to give a big shout out because we wouldn't be here, of course, if it wasn't for the vision of Josh. Yes, so thank you, Josh. And thank you for the opportunity to work with such an amazing group and community with such a nice driven path ahead of us.
Um, I guess other than that, you can find us. We will be here all afternoon if you have questions that you want to ask us personally. I would love to do questions right mm -hmm. now, but they were told us we we're, we got to catch them up on schedule. Mm -hmm. But we are available for questions. We're all about openness and conversations. Yep. And I guess I'll close with the idea that we want to encourage the community to be bold, to be brave, and to be benevolent for the future ahead. With that, thank, thank you all. Thank you.